Hello everyone. As a part of Civil Tips Challenge organized by Civilians Trivandrum, I am here to explain about the determination of slope and deflection of cantilever beams. First of all, there are many methods for the determination of slope and deflection of cantilever beams. They are conjugate beam method, Merkel-Loss method, momentarium method, etc. Here I mainly explain about how to determine the slope and deflection of cantilever beams using momentarium method. Before knowing momentarium method, the basic principles or theorems used for momentarium method are the Morse theorem 1 and Morse theorem 2. First of all, you need to know what is Morse theorem 1. Morse theorem 1 states that the change in slope between any two points on the elastic curve equals the area of M by EA diagram between these two points. That is, while we are having a beam, we can draw the M diagram or the bending moment diagram. The bending moment values divided by the flexural rigidity, that is EA, gives the M by EA diagram. Basically, we are using the M by EA diagram for the computation of slope and deflection. In both the Morse theorem, that is Morse theorem 1 and Morse theorem 2, we are using the M by EA diagram. Now, let us consider a cantilever beam AB of length L carrying a point load P at the free end. The bending moment at B is 0 because the load P is at B, so there is no perpendicular distance, so moment at B equal to 0 and the moment at A is equal to the force into perpendicular distance that is P into L. So M is equal to PL at A and M is equal to 0 at B. So we can draw the bending moment diagram. At A the value of M is PL. So PL by EA gives the value for M by EA diagram and at B 0 by EA that is equal to 0. So, the M by EA diagram has a maximum value of PL by EA at the support or join A. So, according to the theorem, the change in slope is equal to area of M by EA diagram between the two points that is A and B. So, theta B minus theta A is equal to area of the given triangle that is M by EA diagram. So, this M by EA diagram has an area of half into base into height. The base is the length of the beam and height is the maximum value that is PL by EA. So, half into L into PL by EA gives the area of the M by EA diagram that is PL square by 2EI. Okay, then since the support A is a fixed support, we all know that there is a moment which opposes the rotation produced at the support. So there is no rotation possible at the fixed support. So we have theta A equal to 0. That is rotation at A is equal to 0. So theta B is equal to PL square by 2A. Therefore the slope at B is equal to the area of M by EA diagram that is PL square by 2EI. In the similar manner, Morse theorem 2 also explains about the deflection between two points. That is, the deflection between any two points is equal to the moment of area of M by EA diagram between these two points about the last point. That is, here they are same about the moment of area. That is, the area into perpendicular distance. In case of Morse theorem 1, we have only found out the area of the M by EA diagram. But in Morse theorem 2, we have to find out the area as well as the centroidal distance of the M by EA diagram. So the area multiplied by the centroidal distance gives the moment of area of the M by EA diagram. And this moment of area of the M by EA diagram gives the deflection of the beam. So consider the same beam chosen for the Morse theorem 1. So we have to find the area as well as the centroidal distance. Here the centroidal distance, since it is a triangle, it is 2 by 3 L from the support B. So we have the centroidal distance as 2 by 3 L. 
so the vertical intercept is equal to or the deflection is equal to area of m by a diagram multiplied by the centroidal distance so here the deflection delta b a that is delta of b with respect to a is equal to area of the triangle multiplied by centroidal distance here area of the triangle is half into base into height and the centroidal distance is 2 by 3 l so delta b will be equal to p l cube by 3 e i now we can move on to a question that is the combined action of a udl and a point load first we have to find the bending moment diagram of this b at c the bending moment is 0 and at b it is 5 into perpendicular distance that is 5 into 3 and at a the action of load is 5 into 3 plus 6 that is 5 into 3 is a rectangle and 5 into 6 is a triangle but with the action of udl that is a load into distance into distance by 2 that is the bending moment which is acting as a parabola so the combined action will be a parabola so the value will be 5 into 6 plus 10 into 6 into 6 by 2 it is the value of bending moment at a so we can move to the values that is m diagram gives at b the value is 15 at a the total value is 210 plus 15 but 15 is constant for 5 into 3 and balance value that is 5 into 6 plus the portion a b the moment at portion a b is 5 into 6 plus 10 into 6 into 6 by 2 so we can draw the m by ea diagram that is 15 by ea 210 by ea and 15 by ea okay then divide the figure into three parts that is 1 2 and 3 so according to Moore's theorem 1 we know that a1 plus a2 plus a3 gives the total slope and the a1 into x1 bar and a2 into x2 bar and a3 into x3 bar total sum is the deflection at point c so like that we can follow the Moore's theorem 1 and 2 okay the calculation of slope at c we have to find the area of 1 2 and 3 since 1 is a triangle we know that it is half into base into height and half into base is 3 height is 15 by ea and in case of a rectangle it is base into height that is 15 by ea is the height and 6 is the base so 6 into 15 by ea and in case of a parabola we know that it is 1 by 3 into base into height so the area will be 1 by 3 into base is 6 meter and height is 210 by ea so we can find a1 a2 and a3 okay by adding these three areas we can get the slope at c that is theta c is equal to sum of these three areas a1 plus a2 plus a3 that we can 532.5 by ea is the slope at c we can go to next same as that of slope we have to find the deflection in this deflection we have to find what x1 bar x2 bar and x3 bar since x1 bar is from c that is for the first figure from c the centroid will be 2 by 3 l that is 2 by 3 into 3 for the second figure that is from c from b we know that it is 6 by 2 that is but from c it is 3 plus 6 by 2 will be the centroid and for a parabola from b it is 3 by 4 into length that is 3 by 4 into 6 but from c it is 3 plus 3 by 4 into 6 so we have to find x1 x2 and x3 values for determining the deflection okay then del deflection delta c is equal to a1 x1 bar plus a2 x2 bar plus a3 x3 bar so we get the value of deflection as 3735 by ei in the similar manner for calculating the slope at b we have to take the a b portion only so a2 and a3 is only required and theta b is the sum of a2 and a3 similarly for the calculating the deflection at b we have to take the a b portion only so a2 and a3 is required so x2 and x3 is required but the distances are calculated from support b only and the delta b is equal to a2 x2 bar plus a3 x3 bar only this much is there for the finding the deflection and slope using moment area method thank you